Uh, this is uh, Bill's interview for The Secret Life of Scientists and Engineers, take one. Thank you, Spencer. Nicely done. I love science from when I can't remember. I remember watching bees. I remember watching bumblebees. How can this relatively large body be flown around by these seemingly tiny wings? And I remember reading in Ripley's Believe It or Not, according to aerodynamic theory, bumblebees should be unable to fly. I remember thinking, look, the bees are fine. I mean, <laughs> the problem's got to be with the theory. So it was just interesting to me that don't believe everything grown-ups tell you. When I was a kid, I thought bicycles were just the coolest thing. Bicycles and airplanes, come on. So then I found out that there's a whole business called mechanical engineering, which is pretty much involved in bicycles and airplanes. Well, our story begins, really, when I was a senior in college. My friend came hurrying to my house. He wanted me to see Steve Martin performing on cable television. And he goes, look, this guy's just like you. Look at this. He's just, you're just like Steve Martin. Look at this. This is what you ought to be doing. And I, okay, fine. I was focused on gradu being graduated from engineering school, getting a job, being a productive member of society. But then about a year later, when I was working for Boeing, I entered the Seattle Steve Martin Lookalike Contest, and I won. People wanted me to be Steve Martin at parties. I was approached professionally. After that, naturally, you want to start doing your own material. Because after you get laughs on stage, it's really, <laughs> it's addicting. I um, started writing for this comedy show called Almost Live in Seattle. And at the same time, I volunteered at the Pacific Science Center in Seattle. So we were in a meeting for this comedy show and we had to fill six minutes. The guy who was the host of the comedy show, he said, Bill, why don't you do that stuff you're always talking about at the Science Center? You could be, I don't know, Bill Nye the science guy or something. Bill Nye the science guy, you know, that's pretty good. That was when the first science guy bit came to be. Okay. Ordinary cola product, vat of water. Sinks. And it sinks. Not like a rock, but it sinks. And you know why, John? It has this much sugar in it. Okay. This product, Diet Coke, uh, Diet Cola, has this much aspartame, 160 times sweeter than sugar. And consider the following. Look at <gasps> It actually floats. When I was in college, I took astronomy from Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan influenced me a great deal. Then at my 10th reunion, I met with him for a few moments, and I said, I want to do this show about science for kids, this and that, affect the future. He said, focus on pure science. Kids resonate to pure science. That was his verb, resonate. Gravity is the glue that holds our solar system together. Gravity pulls on the planets and keeps them in orbit, the same way this rope pulls on this ball. Now, if it's a television show, it has to be entertaining first. Oh! And if you want to entertain a kid of any age, you make it funny. They laughed at me! They laughed! Ha! <clears throat> oh, well, hi. Just looking at the sun with a pinhole viewer. People like things that are funny or make them smile or what have you. And you're saying, well, why are you doing this interview, Bill? Why don't you do something funny? Why don't you, what's the deal? I'm stumped. When we made the show, I created a document which we call the Rules of the Road. The first thing it says on the Rules of the Road is change the world. And now people come up to me and say, the reason I'm a physician, the reason I'm an orthopedic surgeon, the reason I'm a chemical engineer is because they watch the show. It's amazing. <laughs>